Attention, ladies and gentlemen. On a scale from 0 to 10, please, how is my audio? Can you hear me okay? I hope you can hear me okay. I hope you can see me okay. It's a pleasure to start another open Q&A session about this fascinating topic that is Lean Six Sigma. So please, tell me. Wonderful. 10. 10. That's great. That's great. <coughs> uh, as you know, I do all my best to touch base, at least on a weekly basis, with my students. But this is also open for anyone that is not my student, maybe yet, right? So regardless if you are a white belt, a yellow belt, a green belt, a black belt, a master black belt, or if you are new to Lean Six Sigma, know that you are very, very, very welcomed here in this Q&A, okay? <sighs> Hi, Luis, how are you? Yeah, I, I'm going to check with Tarcísio. I believe that Tarcísio will be offering, you know, I have um, one of my one of my best master black belts recently he offered a training about um about power bi you know and um it was amazing many people were certified um in this introductory level yeah and uh, he is now offering like the full course yeah i truly think that he will be offering this in the near future Okay, so stay tuned. Stay tuned. His name is Tarcísio Filho. He's a superstar. He's a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt. He was my student back there as a, as a white belt, yellow belt. Then he came for the green belt. And then two years later, he came for the black belt. And then we are talking about 2019. And then, and then last year, he joined our master black belt certification process and by the way if you are new to this world we have basically five levels we have white belt that is really about awareness so you can be aware of this lean six sigma world and what is lean six sigma lean six sigma is a very powerful method to help you analyzing and solving what we call chronic problems Problems where the root causes are not clear. Yeah. In fact, problems where the root cause causes are unknown. Yeah. So white belt, pretty much awareness about the method. So you know you are introduced uh, to the beautiful concept of the make, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Yellow belt, then you are able to be a project member. Green belts are able to, to lead projects with, let's say, medium complexity. Yeah, Black belts will be able to work full-time conducting Lean Six Sigma projects. Yeah? And Master Black Belt is really the last level where you need to operate connecting the business strategy to the continuous improvement projects, okay? Very important. And also, it is expected that a master black belt um, masters the Lean Six Sigma concepts, okay? Wonderful. Then let me share here something with you all and once again feel free to drop your question here um, all questions are welcomed okay let me just give you a flavor of the software that normally we use yeah let me see one second Hello.
I hope you guys can see my screen. Let me see, because right now I am not in my office. I am not in Brazil. So let me just see. So I, I don't have my two monitors. Uh, yeah, so now you can you can see Minitab, right? Two monitors. Okay. So see, uh, Minitab is by far the most, let's say, popular uh, statistical software in the planet. Okay, and we do use Minitab uh, quite a lot in our Lean Six Sigma trainings. Okay, guys. So um, one of my favorite ways to explore Minitab, mainly when I was introduced to this software many years ago, is when you come here, let me just zoom in here. When you come here, for example, stat, and let's suppose you want to learn more, or graph, let's suppose you want to learn more about um, or about regression, you know, a very nice topic. Yeah, fitted line plot. So let's suppose you come here, stat, regression, and fitted line plot. Yeah, stat, regression, fitted line plot. For the vast majority of the tools and techniques, you have here a help, you know? And ladies and gentlemen, this help is very helpful, very helpful. Why? Because when you click here, almost always, you have an example. See, you have an example. So... You can take this example. Normally, there is a file where you can just click and download this file. And you can practice. You can practice Minitab very easily. Very easily. Yeah, so I do strongly recommend you. Strongly recommend you if you want to practice Minitab. Regardless if you are, again, a white belt, a yellow belt, a green, a black, a master black belt. If you want to practice Minitab, this is one of the most amazing ways to practice. Okay, so let's go there. And and then uh, deep dive on this deep dive on this example, okay? So, a materials engineer at the furniture manufacturing site wants to assess the stiffness of the particle board that the manufacturer uses. The engineer measures the stiffness and the density of a sample of particle board pieces. Yeah, so again, we are talking about furniture for your, for your house, you know, for your office and then the engineer uses simple regression to determine whether the density of the particles is associated with the stiffness of the board so you can go ahead see that the file is being downloaded here at the bottom bottom left side right then you can click in this file And then, if you prefer, you can kind of uh, follow along here the steps that Minitab is recommending. And there is also here the interpretation of the, of the results. Okay? So, super, 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 super cool. Super useful. Yeah? And let's go ahead and run this. So, let's see how does stiffness behave according to density yeah so stat regression fitted line plot stiffness and density see that minitab is recommending 
you know, more steps here. But first of all, I want to keep it as simple as possible and show here to you all that we have an equation, right? So we do have an equation here. We have a model, we have a function where we know that if density is zero, the stiffness would be minus 21.53. We know that there is no negative, there is no negative stiffness, right? There is no negative stiffness. So we need to be careful with something that we call domain and image. Yeah, very important. And 3.5 for one, is really how much how much stiffness will go up when we progress in one unit of density yeah in one unit so every uh, from 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 7 to 8 yeah stiffness will go up by 3.541 <laughs> we also know that these two R squared here are very much important, yeah, because we want to understand, we want to understand how does stiffness behave according to the variation in density, yeah, so stiffness is varying, yeah, that's my response variable, that's my output, so I would love to understand why. Why does stiffness vary? And then I can argue that I can explain 88% of this variation, right? 80, 80, I'm sorry, 84.5%, 84.5% of this variation can be explained by the variation in X. R squared, R squared, tells us what's the percentage of variation in y that can be explained by the variation in x yeah and and here we have used a very simple model y as a function of a constant plus a coefficient times x maybe i can go a little bit let's say fancier maybe i can go a little bit um, more sophisticated, I can add a quadratic term. Then I will have a constant plus a coefficient times x plus another coefficient times x power 2. Power 2. So now I can check, I can model curvatures. I can model curvatures. Yeah? And remember that quadratic behaviors, they are very common in nature. Very common. Very, very much common. Very much common. I am from Brazil. I love coffee. <coughs> if I don't have any coffee, I am sad. If I start drinking coffee, I am happy, 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 happy. But then... If I keep drinking coffee, like one liter, two liters, I start getting sad, 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 and then I start getting sick, you know? And then I, I am at the hospital if I drink five liters of, of coffee. So if I want to model happiness versus amount of coffee, you, you know, it's definitely a, a non-linear behavior. It is a quadratic behavior, yeah? Hmm. You can model this behavior by a quadratic model, yeah? By a quadratic model. Yeah, wonderful. So, on a scale from 0 to 10, how much are you following me? Type here in our chat window, if possible. From all the things that I have said so far, how much are you following me? So, uh, I can try a different model, quadratic, for example. Mm. 
Yeah, and every time that I run more than one model with the same data set, with the same data set, I need to use R squared adjusted. Okay? Adjusted. 88.3%. Yeah? And why? Why do I need to use R squared adjusted? Because... R squared will always go up when we add more terms. Always go up. Regardless, you know, if this term is really, really adding value to the model. You know, in terms of explaining the variation in Y. So let's suppose I want to explain my happiness. And let's say I am just including a variable that is the color of the shirt that I'm using. The R squared will go up, you know, but it is consuming one degree of freedom. It is consuming at least one degree of freedom. Yeah, so there is a cost for that. And R squared does not consider, like, if we are consuming or not a degree of freedom. Yeah, but R squared adjusted, yes, it does consider. It does consider. So again, if you have the same data set, the very same data set, and you are running multiple analysis, multiple analysis, you definitely want to use R squared adjusted to make your decision. Yeah, to make your decision. Wonderful. I'm glad to know that. I'm glad to know that. Type yes if you are aware about the relevance of regression nowadays. Because the volume of data, the volume of available data just goes up. If we compare like 20 years ago, 10 years ago with nowadays, you know, it is ridiculous how much more data we have right now. So you must, you must know. You must know. If you are a continuous improvement professional, you must know how to deal with, the, with, this, with, with this kind of data, with this kind of scenario, yeah? With all this data. It is very much important. And regression is by far the most useful technique when you have data available yeah wonderful so let's go back there guys just give me please uh one second okay i'll be back one second
Hello, hello, can you guys hear me? Please type yes if you can hear me. <clears throat> I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> yep, and then see that now we have two different models. Two different models. And then we will be using, we will be using the R squared adjusted, R squared adjusted to make our decision. Yeah, so I'll tell you, should we go with the linear model that has an R squared adjusted of 93.9 .9, or should we go for the quadrat... <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Or should we go with the quadratic model 88.3? So should we go with the linear model or with the quadratic model? You guys tell me. You guys tell me. With the linear model or with the quadratic? Beautiful Jean-Pierre. Beautiful. So let's go with the quadratic model. Yeah because the R squared adjusted is greater than the R squared adjusted for the linear model, right? So, okay, what's the advantage of having a good model in hands? I mean, what can we do with that? Okay, so now I know that I can kind of... Uh, explain the variation of stiffness you know understanding the variation in density okay okay i understand that but what can we do with that what's the value behind that what is the value be i'm looking here because i have my the chat when you guys type i can see the chat here you know what's what's the value on that what can we do with that so now we can predict we can predict the stiffness based on the density yes Jean-Pierre correct based on the density and one of the ways to do that one of the ways to do that is is let me share here my screen with you here in mini tab stat regression you have here fitted line plot then we'll run using a different path here stiffness density oops density <coughs> response optimizer yeah I, li I prefer you can also use uh, you know simply to predict you can go ahead here and simply predict yeah I like response optimizer I'll tell you guys why because I can set a target, for example. I can say, I want stiffness at 19.5. You know, I'm setting a target at 19.5. <laughs> so in order to have a stiffness uh, at 19.5, what do you recommend, Minitab, in terms of density? Oh, density should be... 12.66 yeah okay but let's suppose I have you know a density of 13 so take a look here take a look here if the density is 13 then I would have a stiffness of 20.4 yeah, 13, 20.4. 20 
What if my density is 11? Then my stiffness would be 15.64. What if my density is 15? <coughs> then my stiffness would be 26.4. So, guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you already know about that. But nowadays, this kind of analysis, this kind of tools and techniques, they are extremely valuable. Extremely valuable. Market pays professionals very well. Professionals that know how to model processes in a way that you can predict process performance, these professionals are very well paid. They are desired by companies. And I have something to tell you guys. I know there is um, a chronic unemployment problem in many countries in the globe. I know that. But type here for me, Yes, if you know that 75% of the companies around the globe, they've raised their hands saying, I am struggling to find good data analysis professionals. Professionals that know how to conduct this kind of analysis. So again... There is an issue of unemployment, we do understand that, but there is a huge opportunity. Many, many, many companies are complaining, are complaining, are saying that I, I can't find professionals that know how to help us analyze our data and translate our data into insights into valuable actions, into root cause analysis. So this very simple, I, I, I know that, um, again, many of you guys already know about the importance of this topic, but I want to reinforce that. You know, regression, simple regression, polynomial regression, multiple regression, um, the non-parametric regression techniques, uh, machine learning, CART, classification and regression trees, uh, random forest, tree net, you know, the machine learning techniques. Nowadays, they are immensely important. Immensely important. You can build an entire career only, only with regression. Only with regression being a regression expert. Yeah, so this is serious conversation. This is serious conversation. From 0 to 10, how much do you understand that? From 0 to 10, how much do you understand the importance of this topic? Yeah? And please feel free to drop your questions here. All questions are welcomed. All questions are very much welcomed. Hello, Vindra. Yusuf. Uh, Jean, Arosh, um, Hamashi, Arcel, Kandasami, Gina, thank you so much, Monica, John, Jean, thank you guys for joining this session, okay? Ah, no problem, no problem. So just a quick, quick review. Uh, we have responses and factors we have output and input it is so important to understand how your output behave according to your input factors it is so important so important because then you can predict because at the end of the day we are scientists, regardless if you are a white, yellow, green, black, master black, we are scientists. So we want to understand phenomenon. That's what we like to do. Yeah. 
And by understanding the phenomenon, we can model. We can, we can model processes and we can predict processes, yeah? Professor, for a utility that provides continuous electricity, okay, what's the best way to sample this data to be accurate and representative? Data is available for every 15 minutes. <coughs> so, Vindra, the classic answer for that for sample window in terms of continuous improvement, the classic response, Vindra, is one year. Is one year. But this is a response that you will need to fine-tune. Fine-tune. You need to iterate, okay, Vindra? So if you have this data available, yeah, and if you are able to take like a, a one-year window, try to find seasonality seasonality try to see if in this one year window there are patterns that are repeating if there are uh, let's suppose every three months marcelo i see the same pattern you know or similar patterns so you can go for only three months <clears throat> you know if there is no thank you thank you Ikoni thank you so much for your for your words um, I'm glad to know you've enjoyed it uh, if you don't find a pattern Vindra then you should increase this window then the recommendation would be three years and then let's see if you find a nearly pattern you know. You, you need to find the bigger cycles. Does it make sense? The bigger cycles. And it's amazing that you have like data every 15 minutes. <clears throat> and if you go by for three years and you don't find a pattern, you stop at one year. So it's really, really max one year, max 12 months. Because when you go beyond one year, you start having, because remember that sampling, we have five dimensions. I don't know if I've, I've talked about this before. You have basically five dimensions. Your sample must be sufficient. And here I'm talking about sample size. For example, do we have enough data points to have a power of 80% on a hypothesis test, for example? Yeah, to prove... Uh, let's say, a certain difference that we are trying to prove. Okay, so your sample must be sufficient. Your sample must be reliable. <laughs> when, you, when you look at your data points, the measurement system should be, uh, should be good enough to provide re reliable data, yeah? So sufficient sample size, it has to do with how many data points. Uh, uh, it must be reliable, meaning... Uh, how have you collected this? So it has to do with the quality of your data. Your sample must be randomly selected. Randomly selected. Meaning all data points have the same chances of being selected. Yeah? Your sample must be contextual. What is a sample that is contextual? And that it has to do with this time window. So... Uh, I, I know that, if I am not wrong, my dear friends in South Africa, they are struggling with, um, with um, load shedding, right? And we had the same problem in Brazil a few years ago. So I know how, 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 how uncomfortable is, it is. Um, so if I take this, you know, sample window... when Brazil was facing these load shedding problems, I need at least to be aware that this is a very special context. So I need to be very careful on how will I project infer the results of the sample that was collected during a very tough period of time. 
There are many, many, many examples like Christmas trees. If you are <laughs> collecting a sample of sales for Christmas trees during November, December, you have a very specific context. You, can, you, you cannot flag that there is a huge problem because the sales of Christmas trees re drastically reduced in February or in January. No, it, it is expected. It is expected. We just need to understand the context. It is expected. During pandemic, the hotels experienced a huge reduction in terms of revenue. Yeah, expected. It is expected. During the World Cup, many people will buy Brazilian jerseys, you know? Okay, so I need to understand this context, you know? And, and normally they are blocks. Normally they are blocks. They are factors that are not controllable. Are not controllable. I cannot say, okay, so right now pandemic comes to an end because I need to see the revenue of the hotels going up. No, no, no. It's not like this. Yeah, I know that pandemic influences pandemic, impacts the why that is revenue for the hotels, but I cannot control that. I cannot set, you know, I can set the temperature of the room so my nose is not like this. I don't know if you guys can notice. I am struggling a bit. I am right now in Florida. I am in the United States. And, uh, and, the, and the, the, the weather is extremely hot. So when you go outside, it is like very hot, very warm. And then when you come to the hotel, it is super cold with the air conditioning. So uh, because of the, ti the, the temperature difference, uh, I am struggling a little bit, but this is controllable. I can just turn the, the, the air conditioning off. Or I can set the temperature to be the same temperature outside. So this is a real X. Sometimes you, 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 you have a factor that you know that impacts your Y, but it is not controllable. It is not controllable. Yeah. Then we can have a conversation about noise, but um, but if you can like perfectly explain, yeah, if you can properly segment and explain that while during pandemic you have this behavior, without pandemic you have another behavior, we can argue that this is a block, yeah. And block is always discrete. When you have like a continuous variable that impacts your <coughs> response, but it is not controllable, we call this covariate. Covariate. Yeah. And then I need to tell about the, the last uh, sampling dimension. That is, your sample must be well segmented. Well segmented. So are you interested in collecting, understanding electricity in one city, in one state, the entire country, during the night, during the day, during the afternoon, you know, segmentation, stratification. Yeah, so your sample must be, again, sufficient, yeah, must be reliable, must be randomly collected, must be contextual. In the right context or in the in a known known context and must be well segmented must be um, properly stratified yeah there's a lot of variability in hours days weeks months seasons due to load variation over year yeah but if you take the entire the entire year see maybe you can select one specific stratum, yeah? One specific, you have many strata, yeah? You can select one specific stratum to, to work, you know, to work. Yeah, segmentation 
is gold. Is gold. Segmentation is powerful. If you have like a powerful mindset of segmentation, when you guys understand that by segmenting, you can easily, many times easily understand cause and effect relationships, you know, you get addicted to that. Addicted to take data, to take your data and, and, and segment and breaking it down into different um, strata. And then, whoa, now I can explain. Because remember, we are, we must be addicted to explaining relationships. Wow, wow. This Y here happened, you know, this Y varies based on these axes, yeah? This is, this is powerful, very powerful. Even knowing that we need to be humble enough to know that we will never, we will never fully explain anything. <laughs> we will never fully explain anything. But as scientists, as belts, we are very much interested in uh, minimally explaining things at a level that we can be more assertive, that we can promote positive impacts to processes, right? Yeah? Yeah, because... <clears throat> See, it's interesting. I, I, I think I'm... Type yes if I can open up something very personal with you guys. Type here yes if you guys give me the... If you allow me to, op to open up something very personal with you guys. Type here for me. Oh. Um. And uh, with love, what I will say here is with love, okay? See, we are right now so happy, my wife and I, because my wife is pregnant, yeah? She has just um, started, entered in her fifth pregnancy month, yeah? Our first child we are very happy very happy we are feeling blessed yeah and we are studying we decided to study so if you go to my youtube you see there videos of how to how to bath a baby a newborn you know yeah i i i i, I want to study I want to understand, you know, things that I can do that I cannot do. I want to study that. Yeah. <coughs> then my lovely, my lovely, my lovely sister. And she's a mom. She's the mother of um, Isabelle. Yeah. Um, one day she told us, Alice and I, she told us. Oh, you guys should not study that. It has no value. It has no value. Because to raise, like to... Yeah, when you, when you see your baby, everything is unpredictable. Interesting, interesting statement, right? Interesting statement. Because we could, we could argue that the processes in manufacturing I, I, I should I, I should just operate on trial and error because they are also unpredictable. They are not fully predictable. But there is some level of predictability that maybe is very helpful. Very helpful. 
some level of predictability. Okay, so if I, if yeah, uh, last night I was studying how to how to how to put my hands like on the on the neck, so until three months, so I can protect the neck of the baby. I don't want I I I, I don't want to outsource that to a nurse. To I wanna I wanna leave this process. You know, I wanna leave this process. And uh, and 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 uh, and feel you know and uh, and uh, and uh, and give my love, you know to to Arthur you know Arthur. And then uh, it's a boy and, uh, and and then again I know it's a process full of unpredictability I know. But I have two options two options. I can simply. <laughs> I can simply go with my instinct, with my gut, you know, and and do the best I can, or or I can look for information and try try to make it's it's some effort. It's a decision about effort. Effort. You put some effort to make this process as predictable as possible, even if you get an R squared of 10%. <laughs> I think it's better than zero. <laughs> yeah, so my message, yeah, for my sister <clears throat> was, I mean, uh, I, I prefer, I prefer, and my wife the same, to make an effort Without, like, I'm not saying, like, control freak. It's not being control freak, like, to have, like, fully standardized. No, 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 no. I, I know. I understand that the processes are unpredictable. And with babies, maybe even more unpredictable. But to make an effort, make an effort, make an effort, ask the experts. Go for, there are many online courses, like with the basic information. There are some practical courses in the city where I live, you know. To humbly recognize the unpredictability of all processes on earth, but not being lazy. Lazy, insane. Mm, it's fully unpredictable. And sometimes, or many times, we see these on, on, on corporate, in corporate. People say, no, 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 Lean Six Sigma. Lean Six Sigma is too complex. Yes or not? Type here for me. Yes or not? Many times we, we see that. Oh, this is too complex. This is too complex. Every time that I see someone saying, oh, Lean Six Sigma is too complex, you know, I kind of, uh, you know, I kind of feel the same. Okay, so what, what do you want to do? You want to guess. You want to operate on try and error. What do you want to do? For chronic problems, there are problems that you may just go ahead and try and error. That's okay. I'm talking about chronic problems. Problems that have a huge financial impact you know, and problems that happen for a long, long time, yeah, thank you, Luis, thank you so much, Marcelinho the second, no, right now, yeah, we are still voting, but right now, the, the winning name is Arthur, yeah, the winning name is Arthur, thank you, Jean-Pierre, thank you, Vindra, thank you so much, Kandasami, Thank you, Herman. I appreciate that. Thank you, Prosper. Yeah? Correct? Beautiful. So predictability is something that we definitely need um, to work as much as possible. To have processes that are minimally predictable yeah thank you thank you Gina yeah it is powerful absolutely my dear friends thank you so very much so very much for joining me in this session uh, next Tuesday there is a very high chance that we are together okay 
probably at this very same time. Have a blessed week ahead. Let's stay together, okay? And thank you so much for joining me in this session. Have a wonderful rest of week. Bye-bye.